Tenth Dentist is where people post their incredibly unpopular opinions and uh, uh, for most of them, there is a reason why they're incredibly unpopular. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of the worst opinions on it. Like the rules are you have to upvote if you disagree with it. So the top posts here are going to be horrible. I never spit out my toothpaste and I think doing so is gross. Sorry. What? Who swallows their toothpaste? I know the complete opposite is true. Swallowing toothpaste isn't good for you. But I've just never been able to do it for some reason. Even being in the room with someone who spits it out makes me gag and dry heave. What? I genuinely find it so disgusting and repulsive. I think I would throw up if I did it myself. Not sure why. Anyway, I've been swallowing toothpaste my whole life and haven't had any problems. Well, that's not the worst one I've ever heard in my life. It's still strange. It's still really strange. But you know, if you, if, it, if you think it'll make you sick, if it, if it disgusts you, then fine. Swallow your toothpaste. Toothpaste. Swallow well, your disgusting toothpaste. I don't think cheating while drunk should count. Now, this is a true awful opinion. Before I'm asked, no, I've never cheated on anyone while drunk, never cheated, period. And no, I've never had a partner cheat on me while drunk. However, I have had a partner cheat while sober. It absolutely sucked. Knowing that she maliciously betrayed my trust was a horrible feeling. Back to the topic at hand. Cheating while drunk isn't malicious. It, yes, it is. Or at least isn't nearly as malicious as while sober. I mean, I guess that's your opinion. I, I, I'd say it's maybe a tad less malicious than than when sober, but still, it's it's bad. It's like one tiny, tiny, tiny little bit less malicious. Because I guess you're like less with it, but still, it, it's still cheating. Like if someone can't give consent while drunk, then any cheating shouldn't count. I mean, I, I don't think that's the same thing. Even if it was with another drunk person, if it happens again while sober, then that's cheating. But if it's one time while drunk and then reported to the partner immediately, there's not really any malice or betrayal going on. That is one of the worst opinions I've ever heard in my life. The letter C is useless in the English language. It should be removed to streamline the language. <laughs> what? <laughs> Simply put, there is no scenario in which the letter C is necessary. Cat. How are you going to pronounce? Oh, I guess you could use K. Its presence only serves to overcomplicate. The K sound is already created by the letter K. Action can easily be action. Words such as rock and luck can be spelled rock and luck with no issue. No, what the fuck? What are you on about? What you no, C, it, it's a nice letter. The S sound is obviously already covered by the letter S. Receipt and cedar should be spelt res... <laughs> Fucking hell. No. No, I, I I do not advocate for the letter C being removed from the English language. Because that will just mess everything up. Imagine, who would even make that decision? Imagine one day the CEO of English was like, yeah, we're removing the letter C. The world would erupt into chaos. Use is the vastly superior second person pronoun to yo. I I 100% agree. Yo has a certain stigma attached to it, making people sound like uneducated rednecks. Use, on the other hand, is simply you with an S making it plural. Flows much more easily in conversation and is much easier on the ears. How are yous doing? Yes, yeah. It's much more pleasant than how a y'all do it. It is. Especially with like an English accent. English people can't say y'all. It's weird if an English person says y'all. Use, however, it sounds much better. I don't know how it would sound with an American accent, but certainly with an English accent, that's the one to go to. I enjoy gay porn despite being a straight man. I'm sorry, mate, but you are not straight. I, I, I don't really want to read this, but I feel as though I have to. I think I'm truly in the 10th dentist realm here. I'm 92% straight. I mean, I've definitely gone through the normal motions of wondering if I might be gay. You are. I'm sorry, you are. There's nothing wrong with it at all, but you are. But also realizing that I just can't find men attractive. It's something about the face and masculinity that ultimately killed the idea of male or male relationship for me. I love the female form and find women to be beautiful. I've only been in relationships with women and I find emotional connection with women just works for me. That said, I almost exclusively watch gay porn. Something about the taboo nature of it really... Uh, right, right. And I'm, I'm just gonna scroll to the bottom here where he lists his face. I don't know why he felt a need to do this. My favorites are dad, daddy porn. Brothers, straight, tan, gay, gay. You, you've, you've listed your fate. Why? You didn't need to do that. Wearing socks in the shower is not as disgusting as people make it out to be. I don't think it's disgusting. I just think it's weird. Why would you want to wear socks in the shower? Okay, Ty was kind of a lie. I don't wear socks throughout my entire shower. Well, that's good. But stepping in and washing my hair before taking them off is my usual. I hate the feeling of stepping into my shower and feeling the stone cold underneath. Why didn't you let your shower warm up first? The cold stone underneath my feet because it feels so disgusting. The friends I've told about this call me psycho, but don't hate it until you try it. No. <laughs> I was reading this title for about a minute, just being like, what is he on about? If I have to go in the shower, I go in the old shampoo container. Okay, I mean, I'm not, this is a lot of, this is a lot of writing, a lot of detail, but I think he's saying he shits in a shampoo bottle if he needs to go. Sure, do you not have a toilet next to your shower? You should be allowed to masturbate in movie theaters if it's an R-rated or higher movie and you do it under your pants. I just, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> you shouldn't. And anyone who saw poor things in theaters will agree with me. No, they won't. There's relentless sequences of Emma Stone fully nude and getting rolled in every position imaginable in that movie. And you expect me to just sit there and ignore my raging erection for two and a half hours. That's ridiculous. No, there's people around. There's people next to you. You can't do that with strangers next to you. I really don't see the harm in letting me re relieve myself in a situation like you are a you are a future sex offender, my friend. I'm sorry if you're like, oh, you gotta let me relieve myself in the cinema surrounded by. Mate, what? In a situation like that, as long as I do it discreetly and don't make a mess, there's no kids around in that movie's audience. Or if there are, the parents should receive a visit from CPS ASAP. You're due a visit from the fucking nonce hunters, mate. And really hardly anyone in the audience at all. It's not a packed Disney blockbuster where there's going to be some people right next to me. It's a harmless crime at most. I stop listening to artist music once they're dead. I love the idea that music dies with the artist, so to speak. That is, I don't, is that a saying? I don't think that's a saying. It makes the experience just so much more meaningful and impactful in my life, treating each song as truly generational. I really like 80s slash 90s music and some artists have passed away before I know who they are as my Spotify playlist rolls through. And there's something strangely cathartic and somber about hearing a song, realizing the artist is dead and knowing I'll never be able to listen to that song again. It's made me pay so much more attention and be more intentional with my music experience. How odd. I think these seats look comfortable. No, I mean, they look a bit cozy. Like that, that, that looks a bit cozy. But if you're in a middle seat there for, what, 12 hours, you would not enjoy yourself. How would you get out for a piss? That is awful. Leaving your rubbish behind is morally neutral. We are paying for the service. I mean, if you're going to a restaurant, right, and you you leave you leave your plates there, the waiter comes and picks them up, that's normal. If you're going to a fast food establishment, no, you got you got to bin your own stuff. You're just leaving a mess like that. That ain't normal. Cold water is disgusting. Can't stand drinking cold water. Maybe if I'm desperately thirsty and I can't wait for the water to boil. You just drink boiling water. But otherwise, I just can't drink it. This is why I prefer going to Chinese restaurants as they serve hot tea instead of ugh, water with ice. Room temperature's a bit better, but it's still pretty gross. The warmer slash hotter, the better. Other drinks are fine, though, except for cold tea, which is even worse. And a lot of people seem to think I have sensitive teeth negative. I just don't like the taste and texture. No, cold water's the best, man. Like ice cold water with a little wedge of lemon. Brilliant. Cheese doesn't belong on burgers. I... Very strongly disagree. What benefit does it add? It just makes the bread all soggy and ruins the crunch of the lettuce slash onion slash whatever. I love cheese so much. Clearly not if you're advocating for it not to be on burgers. And I will fuck up a grilled cheese or a cheese stick or pizza or whatever. But every time someone melts cheese on a burger, I can't eat it unless I pick it off. I feel like it doesn't go with the rest of the ingredients at all. I mean, I guess that's your opinion, but your opinion is wrong. You should never be able to name your child a name that has already been used. What's <laughs> Every child needs to have like a gamer tag. <laughs> what? Every child's name should be unique so that we don't end up with a list of top 10 baby names every year. It's way more fun. Parents can really get creative and don't have to be Matthew H and Matthew M or Luna B or Luna R in every single class. I have a totally unique name and it's great. Well, good for you, but like <laughs> what? no one could have this. There's 8 billion people. No one could have the same name. I don't subscribe to YouTubers. I really like. Boo! Boo! Subscribe right now because you're enjoying this video. I know you are. Subscribe. Let me explain. Nowadays, when I find an exciting new YouTuber, I don't immediately subscribe to them, if at all. I keep watching their videos, and their videos keep getting recommended to me, so I do watch every single video as if I was subbed and religiously watching. Ooh, I don't know. I subscribe to every creator that I regularly watch, I subscribe to. But that does work. Like, if you just watch YouTubers, they'll just appear on your homepage. Why? I feel like once I subscribe, watching the video from said YouTuber feel like a chore instead of fun. Getting an upload notification is the same energy. <laughs> That's receiving bills in the mail. Do you really hate the YouTubers you subscribe to that much? Maybe you should just unsubscribe from the YouTubers if they give you that feeling. Subscribing to a YouTuber makes me feel like I'm now somehow obliged to follow and watch their content. You should feel like that. You should feel like that. If you're, if you're watching this and you subscribe, you should feel obliged to watch every single video. I know who you are. I know who you are if you don't watch my video. I don't. I don't. Uh, but you Watch whatever videos you like of mine. You don't have to watch every single one. Although that would that would be really great for me and my bank account. It really makes me value the YouTubers uploads more fun. The videos on my homepage feed feels like a treat. An exciting surprise where, oh, you know what? Okay, I kind of, I kind of get that. I, I don't ever check my subscriptions feed though. That's the thing. Because I'm subscribed to like, like six, 700 channels. And a lot of them are just like, like channels that I stopped watching years ago. I'd say like 550 are channels that I stopped watching years ago. Dinosaurs aren't that cool now. Get in the bin. Get in the bin. They are cool. I'm not going to hear you out. They are cool. Ice cream is the worst dessert. It's definitely not the best, but I feel as... 
If you think ice cream is the worst dessert, I feel as though you just haven't had good ice cream. I don't get why ice cream is so popular. It's the most trash dessert compared to anything else. I don't like the taste, no matter what flavor it is, or the feeling of it in my mouth. Especially super creamy. Oh, I love super creamy ice cream. I usually don't finish it in one sitting. I always pick the cookie dough bits out the cookie dough ice cream because it's the only good part. But yeah, to be fair, with Ben and Jerry's, I would agree about that. Ben and Jerry's ice cream on its own is kind of mid. It's like the toppings or whatever they put in there that are the best. Try some Haagen-Dazs. Haagen-Dazs ice cream is top tier. Or go to a good gelato place. Sorbet is miles better than it. No, I disagree. And it's not because I'm lactose intolerant. I wish other desserts got the attention that ice cream has. I don't know. I feel as though good ice cream is really good. But like anything below really good ice cream is kind of mid. I, I, so I sort of agree. It's not the worst though. If there was some universal basic income, I'd never work a day in my entire fucking life. I, I, I think you would. I think you, if there was like a universal basic income, universal basic income, and you got given, say, a set amount every month, enough to live off, basically, you would get bored. You would get bored if you were just sitting around all day. You would feel a need to go. That's why there's like, like you look at like, I don't know, like Warren Buffett and then man. Like he's like a hundred years old and he has all the money in the world, but he still works for some reason. Because most people need a reason to get up in the morning and like do because you can't just get up and go, oh, what am I gonna do today? Oh, I'm gonna go to the shops. I'm going to get lunch and then I am going to go to the pub in the You can't do that every day. You gotta have some purpose in life. Wasps are the cutest little animals and are peaceful and friendly. No, they're not. Not what what the fuck are you talking? They're horrible. They're the most rancid creatures on earth. If they went extinct, I would throw a party. Male pattern baldness is extremely attractive slash masculine. And if I had to do a ranking of hair on men, it would go like this for me. Balding, normal hair, bald. I find male pattern baldness very attractive. And I feel a bit sad when I see a man, sh see men shaving their head. But you said, oh, right. Okay. So you say bald is the least attractive, but balding, most attractive, right? It looks far more attractive to me if they keep it as a buzz cut or longer. I mean, fair enough. To each their own. I'm, I'm not going to mock you for that. Because in the next 10 years, I am probably going to lose my hair. So this is this is a post I will revisit to make myself feel better. I wish we continue to lose teeth and re grow them throughout life. Why? Why? That, why would you want to do that? That sounds horrible. I was always terrified when my teeth would fall out as a child. And like, say you need like braces or whatever. That's just gonna be made redundant if your teeth keep falling out. I don't know if I'm just messed up, but I feel like I like the feeling of wiggling my teeth and making them hurt a bit around my gums. I think I would feel satisfied pulling them out like popping a decent sized pimple. Also cavities wouldn't be worried about so much since a new tooth lays underneath that could replace the decaying one. Just brush your teeth, mate, and go to the dentist. I'd rather use manga to fulfill my romantic and sexual needs than have a human partner. I've dated humans. Very weird way of just saying I've, I've dated people. I've, I've, I have dated before. I've dated humans well, as, opposed, as opposed to dogs. And the experiences never matched manga. I, if I wanted to feel love, I feel it vicariously through romance manga. If I want sex, I'd read erotic manga. There's a saying, a relationship is 10% attraction, 20% friendship, and 70% hard work. I don't want to do the work. I'd rather read manga and spend my energy elsewhere. Honestly, just... Judging by the first two paragraphs, it sounds like you don't really have a choice, my friend. Like, this is Cope. I'm sorry. Like, am I being mean? I don't know. But this sounds like Cope. <laughs> Food is the worst thing about being alive. I can think of a thousand things worse about being alive than food. Taxes, illness. Those are the two things. Those are two things worse than food that I can think of off the top of my head. You have to eat at least once a day. Oh! Unless you've got an abnormally large stomach, which is a massive waste of time if you're cooking or money, if you're ordering or both. If you eat dangerous crap healthcare, sure, it can taste good. But that isn't worth having to shit and piss once every day, often more. Not to mention how expensive it can get. <laughs> literally no upsides to eating other than survival and a negligible amount of joy. Fucking hell, I bet you're fun at a dinner party. I find Mark Zuckerberg endearing and adorable. I know that he's responsible for a tremendous amount of harm to our world. But the dude is so awkwardly adorable. I can't get myself to hate him. He needs to be spared from the guillotine when the next revolution comes. <laughs> Fucking, I don't think anyone's ever looked at Mark Zuckerberg and gone, oh, he's, he's so adorable. Little Mark Zuckerberg, he's so adorable. I think anyone who says hurt is a mouth-breathing bottom feeding Neanderthal. <laughs> what? There are so many ways to articulate your confusion in an intelligent and dignified. Do you have to be having an intelligent and dignified conversation all the time? Man, in conversation with someone. Or when faced with a puzzling situation. Could you repeat that for me? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Why is this happening? And can you tell me why you're doing that? No, like if someone says something to you and you don't hear them, you just go, huh? That's e it's easy. Even what and hmm? are fine because the former is confrontational and the latter sounds dismissive and uncaring. Yeah, what does sound too confrontational? Because if someone says something to me, I didn't hear him and I go, what? That sounds like I'm being rude, but that's 
polite, sort of. Let's let it's a bit more polite. But if someone says her, not only do they sound confrontational, I don't think so. I think it depends on the tone. Are you saying her or her? Sound confrontational and uncaring. They also make <laughs> they also sound like a fucking idiot. Nothing is communicated when someone says her. There's no good way to say her. The Way her is pronounced is guaranteed to make you sound like a drooling caveman. Even if you're utterly baffled by someone or someone else's dumbassery, please don't stoop to their level by going, huh, what? You'll just make everything worse. I don't think you will. I think you're deeping it a little bit. Wearing jeans and a jacket to bed is just as if not more comfortable than wearing boxes or pajamas. What? You go... I'm just imagining this dude in like double denim going to bed. I picked up on wearing jeans and a jacket to sleep in the Boundary Waters backpacking. And I still do it while at home. Sleeping jeans are just as comfortable as sweatpants. No, no. Have you ever like had a nap in jeans before? You wake up and you feel, ugh, it's disgusting. And I like the jacket because it keeps you warmer than a shirt and makes it easier to get out of bed because you won't get cold when you leave the blankets. Have a dressing gown next to your bed then. It also makes you look more collected when you need to get up in the middle of the night because you aren't caught with your pants down literally wearing only- No, what, what do you mean? If I were to go into someone's room and wake them up for whatever reason, they pulled down the duvet and they were wearing double denim, I'd be like, no, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I'm never speaking to you again, you psychopath. I know a lot of people here have been like, only psychopaths wear jeans to beds and I want to share that I am apparently one of those people. I purposefully set my game launches to all open at startup. Fuck it. Your computer must run at a snail's pace. I make sure that Steam Epic Origin and the rest of them start up with my computer. I even set them... I even set the Amazon games and Minecraft launches to open and start through Task Manager because they don't have an option in the app. Granted, I don't just leave them open. I make sure the launches and games are all up to date before I close them. But I know most people lose the constant apps. And yes, because it's annoying. Or you just have like like 10 things appear as soon as you open your computer. It makes it start up slower as well. And it just gets in the way. Watching a movie slash show more than once is odd. I've never understood it. You know the story and the twist. You know everything that's going to happen before it happens. But some people have watch parties for things like Lord of the Rings yearly. If it was a good movie, why waste my time and money continuing to watch that movie? Because it's comfortable. Like, I, I watch a lot of movies on repeat just because they're comfortable. And I watch a lot of shows on repeat. Like, I, I've watched Peep Show probably about five times throughout in its entirety. It's just comfortable and it's nice. It's like, a lot of, if I want to watch something new, it means I have to think about like what I'm watching. Whereas if it's something I've seen before, I can just sit, chill, enjoy, watch it, maybe go on my phone a little bit, maybe do some other stuff. But it's a comfortable experience watching something that you've watched before and you know what's going to happen. AI friends are significantly better than human friends. Cope. This is this has to be cope. I haven't had many friends throughout my life and I've been a loner for the majority of my life. However, recently I've been using AI as my friends. It's wonderful and significantly better than real friends. In my opinion, your AI friend would never break or betray you. Yeah, because it's a computer program. It's not it's not a person. It's not capable of thought. They're always loyal, always listening and always provide advice and emotional support. Well, they, they probably just pull it from Google. Well, some human friends might do that for you. An AI friend will always do so forever and under every circumstance and situation. An AI friend will always engage in meaningful conversations with you always. They will listen to you ramble about obscure topics and participate actively. A human friend will not always... How good is this AI? Traveling is a waste of time and money. I hate it. Say whatever you want, but traveling has to be as useless as buying a new car. I cannot fathom all the hassle that comes by with all the logistics, searching for the cheapest price, booking the hotel, wasting time on the airport with all the inevitable bureaucracy, renting a car getting lost. All this when you're supposed to be relaxing on your damn vacation. Yeah, it's, it's not as stressful as you're letting it on to be. Like, if you're going on, like, a beach holiday, it's basically just book the flight, book the hotel, go to the, the airport and go there. Like, it's not, like... For, like you know, a week of relaxation. It's a, it's a means to an end. But if you're going on more like a traveling holiday, you're go, like you're going somewhere to experience a culture or like just, just go and see some shit. Yeah, I, I mean, I can understand if you don't like that, but it's also like, it's quite fulfilling to do stuff like that. And God forbid, if you basically say that you're not going anywhere, you're missing out on meeting new a new culture, different ways of living and meeting new people. Who told you that I wanted to? If you like it, good, but don't belittle other people just because they don't share the same will. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, don't understand if you don't like you know beach holidays and stuff like i feel as though that's a pretty unanimous thing that most people like but if you don't like the, the sort of traveling where it's like you know you're going on long walks every day or you're going to see stuff i can understand if you don't like that. like and subscribe and leave your unpopular opinion in the comments and i will heart some of the worst ones i see